Good evening and welcome to our Monday evening prayer. And it's good to welcome you to Jacques, to dear sister Amir, and pray all went well for you this morning. For dear Matthew, for sister Helen Francis, for Grace, and for dear Yolanthe and sister Sue. Good to have you join me for our time of giving thanks to God for all the many blessings we receive. So if you have a candle handy, let's light our candle for each other and for peace. <clears throat> we light this light to give thanks to God for each one of you here and also to remember all the many requests we receive for prayer and we bring all of them with the children of Syria before our Father, Mother, God. Amen. <clears throat> and now we ring our little bells for unity and peace. And our prologue for this Monday evening, we read, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. And Monday evening, we commune with the angel of peace, saying, angel of peace, 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 angel of peace be always everywhere. So let us just focus on the angel of peace and ask the angel of peace to bring peace to Syria and to the children of God who are struggling in their spiritual journey. Amen. And our opening prayer from our little book of Celtic prayers from Iona, we read, O Christ of the least and the homeless, O Christ of the lost and betrayed, come close to each one of us here this night, that we may come close to you. As you watched us with care at our soul's shaping, look on us now with grace as you blessed us with light at the sun's rising shine on us now with your love amen <clears throat> and our hymn this evening is from hymns for living from our unitarian brothers and sisters and the hymn is by jacob trapp 1899 and it's called a world transfigured wonders still the world shall witness never known in days of old never dreamed by ancient sages howsoever free and bold sons and daughters shall inherit wondrous arts to us unknown when the dawn of peace, its splendor, over all the world has thrown. They shall rule with winged freedom, worlds of health and human good, worlds of commerce, worlds of science, all made one and understood. They shall know a world transfigured, which our eyes but dimly see, they shall make its towns and woodlands beautiful from sea to sea. For a spirit then shall move them, we but vaguely apprehend aims magnificent and holy. Then shall bloom in song and fragrance, harmony of thought and deed, fruits of peace and love and justice where today we plant the seed, a world transfigured, and everything is possible to God, for God, to those 
who believe. So there we go. And now <clears throat> we have a psalm, a modern version from Psalms Now by the Reverend Leslie Brandt, and it's Psalm 73. It is generally expected that God will stand by the righteous and relate to those whose deeds and thoughts are purely altruistic. I am afraid I just don't belong to that class of people. I guess I'm just a perpetual backslider. Rather than thinking unselfishly, I find myself envious and covetous about those who have so much more than I. They never seem to have problems. They are always so strong and healthy. I doubt that they know the meaning of conflict. They are proud, carefree, devil may care, even malicious, and so disgustingly smug about it all. <clears throat> they act as if God didn't even exist and they are almost blasphemous in their attitudes and actions. And yet people will honour and applaud them. They find nothing to censor about them. What aggravates me is their obvious unconcern about God or fellow man. Yet they always appear to be so comfortable and well off. And all the while I struggle so desperately with my sin permeated nature. I try so hard to please God, yet my days are full of conflict and my heart seethes in unrest. I know I speak foolishly and unfairly, but I get so fed up with it all. That is, until I begin arguing with God about it. Then I realize that they are not as well off as they appear to be. <clears throat> their bright bubble will burst one day, their dream will turn into a nightmare. It is just that I get so depressed at times and I act like a stupid fool. What is so amazing is that even while engrossed in irrational and unspiritual contemplations, I am never far from you. You hold me close to yourself. You guide me and watch over me. You assure me that it is all worth it. And because of this glorious truth, I really have no need for anything else. The essential desires of my being are met in you. I shall often be victimized by human failure, but my great God never ceases to love me and bless me. How good it is to know that God is always near. What a beautiful psalm, and so truthful. I resonate with a lot of it, because at times in my journey, I've been a stupid fool. And at times many years ago, I guess I too was envious of those who seemed to have it all. And yet, something happened. I began to realize that it's all show. What matters to God is not the wealth you have, it's the wealth you have in your heart. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for choosing that beautiful psalm. <clears throat> now, I was going to read another segment from Brother Brother Bill's beautiful book, Reflections of the Heart, but I just got a no-no to be still because I sense there's someone here.
that possibly needs to experience the healing touch of Christ. Not the Christ we were introduced to as children where there was a lot of fear and guilt, but to the Christ who is our friend, our brother, a great teacher, and who happens to be the Son of God incarnate. So let us for this while be aware of where you are. And as you close your eyes, be mindful of where your hands are. Rest them on your lap with your palms facing upwards so that the Lord can bless your hands each time you come to praise him. So as we closed our eyes, we focus on our in-breath and we hold it. And now we release to the Lord whatever may be heavy on our heart. It doesn't matter how big or small the problem or problems are. Just name them, bless them, and surrender them to the Lord. Because he told us many times, come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. So let's take the words of Christ to our heart and let us call on him now. Let us use our precious gift of free will and invite, invoke, and ask the Lord to come and join us. Be still. Just be still and be aware of the presence of Christ. Sense the peace where you are. Sense the love. Just relax now. And I ask the Lord Christ to come to you, to join you in our short meditation. And as you relax, you hear that knock on your door. And you are surprised because you're not expecting anyone. So you get up, you go to the door, and as you open it, you suddenly realize it is the Lord, the beloved. And he's asking you to join with him for a short walk through the Cathedral of God. And he leads you down a narrow country lane, strewn with the most beautiful flowers, spring bulbs in flower, the daffodils, the tulips, the crocus. And the lane is awash with color. And the Lord takes your arm and you walk in a spirit of mindfulness as you admire God's creation all around you. And towards the end of the lane, there's an old tree stump. And as you sit there, you look across the valley 
and you see the most beautiful scene with all the spring lambs gambling, bleating, and full of fun. And the Lord looks at you with tenderness and he asks, do you not wish that you could be one of them gambling and bleating and all having a merry good time? He looks at you straight in the eye and he asks you, what is holding you back from enjoying this beautiful life? What is heavy on your heart? Tell me. At first, you hold back. But the Lord asks you again. Are you troubled, heavily laden, worried? Because if you are, why not tell me? So you open your heart to the Lord your God and you share with him what is heavy on your heart. It may be <clears throat> that you're awaiting hospital tests and results like Sister Ramir who's here with us. Or maybe it's Brother John's sister Maureen in Boston, who's in hospital, having some tests done to our heart. Or maybe it's a dear friend of Moira, Angela, who's one of the cooks at the Abbey, whose son Joel is causing a great disquiet. Or maybe someone you love is suffering in chronic pain and you feel helpless. Or maybe it's what you've seen on the news, what happened to the young children in Syria, where you felt so helpless. Or maybe you're at a crossroads on your spiritual path and you're unsure which way to go because your head tells you one thing but your heart is telling you another. Or maybe you know someone close to you who's terminally ill, like Sister Sue her dear friend Kath, going back many years when there were children together and her friend Wilf, both terminal. Or maybe you're concerned and saddened to see so much rejection within God's family where so many beliefs have a mistrust for each other. Or maybe you're just hurting and despondent and you need some light to clarify your thoughts and to reawaken your heart, to love God again without the fear and the guilt and the unworthiness. And you feel the love from Christ for he takes your hands and you sense his love it's a selfless love and there's no hidden agenda to convert to him he just wants to love you and give you the strength to carry on trusting in him not in what you think you know, but to trust in his love. So just relax now. 
and to love the Christ portrayed as the Good Shepherd who's here with you now wanting so much to alleviate your stress, your anxiety, your sadness. Trust him and let not fear overwhelm your inner peace. Be still. Tonight the sun will leave the sky The moon will smile a sweet goodbye The flower of day will fade and die And I'll be missing you The ghosts of twilight will convene In purple velvet edged with green And faithful to my old routine Before, if anything, I miss you more. I miss you more. Dreams will meander through my mind. They'll know exactly where to find The memories that you left behind And I'll be missing you Same thing tonight as all those before If anything I miss you I miss you more Sing old memory Bittersweet Make my The tide of time can't ease the pain Of love that will not come again For all the years that may remain So as we sit in the presence of Jesus, we know that without his love, we will be missing him because he is the light that gives us the strength to embrace whatever life throws at us so that we can bless it and release it to his love.
but just be mindful that the Lord Christ loves you and his desire is to shower his love upon you but he needs your help he needs you to ask so that you can receive his love it's a healing love Just allow your heart receive his gentle touch and bring it back into alignment with your higher self as a child who is loved, dearly loved by God. And there's no greater love in this life on earth than to know that you are loved. Loved by the Christ, the Son of God. He desires your love so that he can shower his abundance into your life and give you the strength to cope with whatever you have to face. But he asks you to name those issues and to release them to him and leave them with him in a mindset of gratitude. So are you willing now to bless and release to him That's all he asks. And that you may be willing to surrender your heart to his mystical heart and begin an amazing journey of mystical love. Breathe in his breath and allow his breath transform your mind, your body and your spirit and allow it reawaken you to your divinity as a co-creator of God. Because you are loved, you've always been loved by God and Christ will never stop loving you even if you choose to walk away. That's how selfless he is and how generous he will be with you. So let go whatever your head is telling you. It may be saying to you, you're unworthy. They are not the words of Christ. Christ finds you worthy of his love. So embrace it now. You've nothing to lose but your pride. Lord, we praise you. We truly praise you because you give us so many chances to get up and try again, as you did when you fell three times, carrying the weight of our selfishness and sinfulness on your shoulder. You got up, as hard as it was, you got up. So help each one of us now to get up again and try again. Be still. And we bring to this table Angela 
and her son Joel. And we bring mourning and pray that the cardioversion to bring her heart rate back into normal rhythm is a success. And that dear sister Amir's biopsy results will be good. And that all the fear will be taken care of. And we bring her friend Myra and her son who struggles with breathlessness and her friend Cora who's got breast cancer. And I bring each one of you because the Lord knows you have need of him. So I thank the Lord for alleviating all your fear and giving you the strength to embrace whatever with his love. But be strong, take heart. He's not abandoned you. It's we who abandon him by allowing our head convince us that we're unworthy. So we come and we pray his prayer with renewed fervor as we say together, Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here and those whom we love our daily bread. Forgive us the times when we allowed our head and all its nonsense to convince us that we are unworthy of your love. But forgive us for the times when we have given in to selfishness to unforgiveness, to self-pity. Lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us from those negative forces that seek to alienate us from your love. Protect us from the Antichrist, who has only one objective, and that is to discourage us in our service to your love. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Thank you, Lord. And now we close with a simple blessing, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky and the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom be with you, be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. And as I blow out this light, I just say, Lord, you've never ever refused me prayer. And I just want to say thank you for hearing the prayers of all here and those whom we have remembered by name. We thank you, Lord. You are a mighty God. You are the Prince of Peace. Amen. So we say, go in peace to love and to serve this God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum and may the peace within you, which is God's peace, reawaken you now 
to be God's ambassadors for unity and peace in the Cathedral of God. Amen. Thank you, all of you, for being here and for doing something beautiful for God. Bless your heart. Till we meet again around this table of love, I pray you have a good day, or if you're in Europe, a blessed evening. Amen.